The Rules Committee will come to order. Uh, thank you all very much for being here. We're here for uh, further consideration of H.R. 2608, and the Chair will be in receipt of a motion. Chair will be in receipt of a motion. Recognize the gentleman from Dallas. Mr. Chairman, I move the committee grant a rule providing for the consideration of H.R. 2608, the Small Business Program Extension Reform Act of 2011, and the Senate Amendment thereto. The rule makes an order a motion offered by the Chair of the Committee on Appropriations that the House concur in the Senate Amendment to the bill with the amendment printed in Part A of the Rules Committee report as modified by the amendment printed in Part B of the report. The rule waives all points of order against consideration of the motion. The rule provides that the Senate amendment and the motion shall be considered as read. Finally, the rule provides one hour debate on the motion, equally divided and controlled by the chair and the ranking minority member on the Committee on Appropriations. You've heard the motion of the gentleman. Let me just uh, explain uh, what it is that we're doing here. As, as we all know, on Monday, uh, this uh, amendment was made available online with every provision that, um, that we have before us, and so this is absolutely identical to what has been online since Monday, which is four days ago, I guess. And um, we have one minor modification. I'd like to share that modification with the members of the Rules Committee. At the end of the matter, proposed to be inserted by the House Amendment before the short title, insert the following. Section 142, effective on the date of the enactment of this Act, of the unobligated balances remaining available for Department of Energy Energy Programs, Title 17 Innovative Technology Loan Guarantee Program, pursuant to Title IV of Division A of Public Law 111-5, $100 million, is rescinded. Let me just say that this obviously relates, as we all know, to the failed Solyndra uh, effort in my state of California. And it's very unfortunate what has happened there, and uh, I think Democrats and Republicans alike recognize that it is uh, a very, very sad, sad situation. Sad for the taxpayers, sad for many of the people involved, and uh, unfortunate, very unfortunate. That is the only amendment to the proposal that we had yesterday, and so the arguments that were raised for and against uh, the measure yesterday obviously still um, exist. It is imperative that we move as expeditiously as possible to ensure that the American people who are suffering because of the disasters that we have gone through have the resources necessary, and at the same time we deal with the fiscal challenges that we face in this country. And so I hope that we can, in a bipartisan way, move this measure out and go right down to the floor so that we can get this to the United States Senate so we'll have between now and November 18th to see the appropriations process uh, work its way to uh, what I hope again will be a bipartisan agreement. I know there will be bipartisan support for this measure. There was yesterday. Uh, I know there was bipartisan opposition yesterday and there may be uh, some Republicans, but uh, I know my friend on the floor said, uh, talked about the bipartisanship of the opposition. There was bipartisan support. Democrats did support this yesterday, so I can only surmise that we'll have uh, support of Democrats uh, in the next few minutes when we go to the floor. So I urge my colleagues to support this measure. Are there any amendments to the rule, Ms. Slaughter? <clears throat> we don't have anybody to ask questions of. I, um, well, I, I understand. Read again. Let, let, let me concur with you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. It is a sad, sad thing. It happened to Solyndra, but it sure is a heck of a, a cynical advantage, isn't it, to make another slap here at the administration by doing this? Uh, we understand that, and I have no questions, and I don't know if in my side. Well, if the gentleman would yield, I, I mean, no, I would, I would no simply questions. say that I, I know that Democrats and Republicans <clears throat> alike have made it clear we have $100 million here that was allotted for Solyndra, and to be able to utilize those dollars, I think Democrats and Republicans alike should would much rather have that $100 million utilized for those families who are dealing with the floods, the hurricanes, the tornadoes, and the other disasters that we've faced. I thank my friend for yielding. No, it's your time. I thank you for no, yielding. You're very you. generous I to have yielded to me. I guess I better get it back. Because this is not money from Solyndra. This is money from the Energy Department, from that program. This is the program. That's this entirely different from what you said. Uh, this is the money that was allocated for Solyndra, and we are taking the steps no, to ensure that those dollars 
are not going to be going to Solyndra. Of course they're not going to be going to Solyndra. That's bankrupt. That's right. We understand and that, but this is money from the program. We're ensuring that that other people the, could have used was, to create. Well, I don't want any more jobs. cylinders myself. I know but, yesterday no. the program that you were uh, cutting had already uh, produced 40,000 jobs. It was on its way to 60. I'm glad that that one didn't pass because uh, okay. that would have done some damage to those of us who are really trying to put people back to work. But I, I think we need the, on the statement that what this does is comes out of the program and it's okay. not money for cylinders. Vote occurs on the motion of the gentleman from Dallas. Those in favor will say aye. Oh, certainly. Mr. McGovern, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm, I, you know, um, one of the things that those of us on our side are concerned about is jobs. I'm just curious. Uh, you know, you, you, the, original, the bill that we uh, voted on yesterday cut the advanced vehicle ma uh, manufacturing grant, and now you're cutting some additional grants. I'm just curious. Is there a jobs impact statement about yes. any jobs that would be lost? Uh, if, and, uh, if the gentleman, yield, if the gentleman would yield, I, I will yeah. say to my friend that uh, it's very obvious that as we seek to deal with the $14.5 trillion debt and the massive deficits that we are facing this year alone, that trying to rein in that demand as we've looked at the international markets continue to plunder is uh, one of the best and most important steps that we can take to create jobs in this country. And uh, I think there's bipartisan recognition of that, and I thank my friend I, for yielding. I guess, I, I guess that's not an answer to my question. I mean, my question is you're cutting – you're cutting programs that actually are designed to create jobs. Has there been any thought on your side given to how many jobs would be lost as a result of these cuts? And, uh, and is there a CBO estimate out there to tell us how much we're, we're saving? I, I don't know of a, of a CBO number that has come up on this continuing resolution. As, as my friend knows, this is simply uh, an effort to ensure that we have this stopgap spending measure put into place so that we don't face a government shutdown. I mean, that's, that's what we're trying to avoid right now, and we try to do it in the most fiscally responsible manner, and I believe that the steps that we are taking here will go a long way towards creating new jobs, and we hope good private sector jobs, and uh, that's the goal that we have. So I guess the answer to your question is, is no. no I, yeah, well, okay, the answer that, to your question is no. That, that is, okay. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, as I can see it, everything that was objectionable in the bill that we voted on yesterday is still in place. Plus I think I said that in the opening. I said that it's identical, and so there's recognition right, no, so there's, that there haven't been any changes made other than the one little paragraph that I read here. That's the only modification to the measure that we considered yesterday. Well, yeah. Would the gentleman yield to, I yield to the Let me gentleman. make the point again that the cut, the, what we were going to do yesterday to pay for it, had already created, created 39,000 jobs, and there were enough uh, requests in the pipeline to reach 60,000. And that's what's being what was going to be lost yesterday. Been at what's happening here. I don't have the numbers on how much money's left in that program. I thank the gentleman yeah, for her comments, and I would I point out that even the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, which I don't always agree with, you know, sent a very strongly worded letter in defense of the program that my friends on the other side of the aisle cut. I mean, we need to be focused on job creation and putting people back to work. And totally agree. You know, and well, you know, Absolutely and I think right. we ought to be talking about jobs. And not just about absolutely uh, right. Well, I mean, absolutely it would be right. nice if we had a jobs bill on the House floor, and maybe the gentleman could t tell us when we might have the president's jobs bill on the floor, given the fact that but, we're this new open Congress. Would the gentleman yield to I, me one more time? I yield to now, then I'm, I'm, but my side, I think, is more concerned with the fact that we're making this policy that disaster monies have to be offset. Mm -hmm. I know you have. Now, you, you've, you've that's that. the point that we want to make uh, because, uh, as I said yesterday, we are rebuilding Afghanistan with taxpayers' money. But when the taxpayers themselves want some of that money, it's not available to them if it's not offset. And just today, I heard that they are building high-speed rail from Baghdad to Basra with American taxpayers' money. And our money for high-speed rail was just taken away this week. So well, let me, I, I think you can see where our priorities are. We I, want to rebuild the Middle East, yeah, I, I, never I, mind the Northeast. I, I understand that. I, I know that my friend recalls very well that when she was sitting in the chair where I am and Nancy Pelosi was the Speaker of the House and we had funds that were necessary for the rebuilding following Hurricane Katrina, those dollars were offset. Um, the vote occurs well, on I, the I, motion I just, of – I just want to ask the oh, gentleman. Oh, the gentleman would gentleman like to be recognized? Yeah, I, I thought he had the time. I, I just, thank you. I would just like to – 
get an answer to my question when we might be able to anticipate a vote on the President's jobs bill? Well, obviously, uh, we're going to be, we have lots of jobs bills that we have uh, coming, and I know that the input of the President will be very important. Uh, I, I have not, I know that the, this question is posed out there, are we for or against the President's jobs bill? I, I'm very supportive of a number of the items in the President's jobs bill, and I look forward to supporting those as we see the committees of jurisdiction work through that as quickly as possible. What's, what's wrong with just bringing it up and letting the Congress work its will? Because I think that, new openness. because I'm an institutionalist, and in the spirit of openness, I think that well, we should we have, have a committee we, structure. We have a I mean, we have committees in the Congress. We have, we have, we have, we have committees of Congress. But there's we have no action or we, action on this. We have, a, we have to keep the government open. Uh, well, I, I, I don't you know, know you, you can't have it both ways. We're going to always do the committee structure, but not if uh, we're going to well, do the government Well, the Appropriations Committee, we had we had we Harold had, Rogers and right. Norm Dix both sit here before us. Both were supportive of the bill. I don't know if you recall, but Harold Rogers and Norm Dix both well, sat here. That doesn't speak for the saying, whole Appropriations Committee. Well, I'm just telling you, they're the leadership of the Appropriations Committee. Did you want every member of the Appropriations Committee? It's a big well, thing. I, I know we've got I a nice right now. I would trust here. this lot to always go with me. Do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if I, could, if I could just go back to my question, I'd like to know when we could bring the President's As, Jobs Bill up. Listen, I hope very much that we will have provisions in the President's Dreyer, Jobs Bill. That there are uh, bills that come before this committee that, are, that don't right. go through regular order. And let me, let me just say, I would like to, and you know what, oh, thank you. Mr. Hastings reminds me that we don't have order in the room here. Thank you, Mr. Hastings. I appreciate that. Uh, let me just say that I hope very much that we'll be able to bring up provisions in the President's Jobs Bill, and I hope that we'll be able to get the resources to the people who really need it as quickly as possible and that will require us to move to the floor um, as soon as possible. And uh, if, have, if my have, colleagues would allow us, if, if my colleagues... Do we have a time when, the, when we might be able to bring the President's jobs bill up? I'm sorry, I thought I just addressed that. I, you want me to address it again? Okay, clear. You, you, okay let, me, let, me, let, me, let me try and state this okay. again. Okay. Um, we have a committee structure right. here in the House of Representatives. You don't always follow. If I might finish? Go ahead. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. We have a committee structure. And uh, a bill of the magnitude of the President's is one that I believe needs to be vetted through the committee structure. I am very supportive of a number of the items that the President has talked about uh, in his proposal. Okay? I'm supportive of some of the provisions, obviously not all. I'm very supportive of the notion of our pursuing trade agreements, which the President has said is a priority for job creation. And I want us to do that as quickly as possible. Uh, so we're going to go through a committee structure, and we will be as we have uh, done a number of jobs bills so far in this House, and we have plans again for the trade agreements, we have plans to deal with the 3% the withholding, we have access to capital for small businesses so that we can create good jobs among small business men and women in this country, and so we have a number of items, and I know that input from our colleagues on the Democratic side of the aisle proposing aspects of the President's uh, jobs plan will, in fact, uh, be considered. So is and that a week much, or two weeks or a month or three months? Or what, what, what does the gentleman anticipate? I can't tell you. I, I don't know. Thank you. That's okay. Right. I don't that's know. Honest I don't know. Thank you. And I hope very much. Uh, I don't want any of my friends to not have an opportunity to be heard here, but I'd like to say that I hope we'll be able to move through the real, rule rate relatively quickly on the floor so that we can get to a vote on this measure so that the people who are truly in need can have this issue addressed in the Senate and we can proceed. Mr. Uh, Polis. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the uh, uh, Just two quick points. One, um, it was just stated by Senator Reid that this uh, House continuing resolution will be dead on arrival uh, in the Senate. And I, uh, again, apparently this is some exercise we have to go through before we can get to the real continuing resolution, which uh, people from both parties have expressed the need to do. Um, my other point, and I just want to clarify this because I think there was some ambiguity in, in your opening remarks, Mr. Chairman. I want to make sure so we don't have an expert witness, but I think you can help me clarify this. If this passes, Solyndra gets no money, and if it doesn't pass, Solyndra gets no money. I just want to clarify that, that this is not about Solyndra. Solyndra will not get any money. They, they're bankrupt. And whether this passes or not, would, will you help clarify would, would, would that they the don't gentleman get money? Yield? Yes. Be happy to this, yield this is $100 it. million, dollars, as my friend from Rochester has said correctly, for the program. We want to ensure, yes. we want to ensure, we want to ensure that these dollars, the gentleman wants to reclaim his time, I'm sorry. Yeah, reclaiming my time. I mean, I think, I think the, the, the I chair was kind enough to answer. Uh, whether, if this passes, Solyndra doesn't get a penny. If this fails, Solyndra doesn't get a penny. Uh, Solyndra has nothing to do with the continuing resolution. So I just wanted to clarify, because I, I think in the opening remarks there was some reference to sending less money to Solyndra. I want to be clear. 
whether this passes or fails, Solyndra is not getting any more taxpayer money, nor should they, and I'm happy to yield back. Well, I appreciate uh, my friend recognizing that. Let me just say that uh, obviously this is $100 million that was going to Solyndra. It's $100 million that was going to Solyndra. My friend is right that Solyndra is now broke. We want to make sure that we don't see another Solyndra, and we have $100 million that can be used as an offset so that we can have those resources go to the American people who are truly in need. The vote occurs in the motion of the gentleman from Dallas. Those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. no. The ayes have it. The ayes have roll it. Call. The clerk, call the roll. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Sessions, aye. Ms. Fox. Aye. Ms. Fox, aye. Mr. Bishop. Mr. Bishop, aye. Mr. Woodall. Mr. Woodall, aye. Mr. Nugent. Aye. Mr. Nugent, aye. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott, aye. Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster, aye. Ms. Slaughter. No. Ms. Slaughter, no. Mr. McGovern. No. Mr. McGovern, no. Mr. Hastings. Mr. Hastings, no. Mr. Polis. No. Mr. Polis, no. Mr. Chairman. Aye. And the clerk reports total. Eight yeas, four nays. And the motion is agreed to, and I'll be managing this for uh, the majority. And I will do it for minority. Ms. Slaughter for the minority. Thank you all very Mr. much. Mr. Chairman. Oh, yes, Mr. Sessions, excuse me. Uh, if I might, uh, it's perhaps not a part of protocol, protocol but it's regularly noted that uh, I will be losing a staff member that I've had for three and a half beautiful years here at the Rules Committee. Keegan Linehan, who will be, uh, who has been my very able professional staff member, is turning red. That is not a suntan. Uh, and Keegan has not only ably and successfully represented me, but I believe been a friend on both sides of the aisle to all the members Keegan, of all the we're staff. Thank you. Very much, Keegan. Thank you. Without objection, the uh, committee stands adjourned. <laughs>